In previous videos, we looked at Jude 1, which describes certain men who have crept in unawares. The Bible tells us they are Pleiadians and that many of them are wearing defiled garments. They are defiled by the flesh and, more specifically, strange flesh. And the garment that they wear is spotted by the flesh. They have a name that they live but they are dead, and they will actually die a second time when God takes them out. They are murderers, and they do not have a soul. We also looked in depth at the mystery of the image, the clothing of light that deceives, Psalm 104, 1 and 2, Revelation 13, 14. The attire of the breathing substance of human bodies, the serpent charming enchantment, Isaiah 3.20, the changeable suits of apparel, Isaiah 3.22, the enchantment tool that transforms, Genesis 3.24, the garment that is spotted by the flesh, Jude 1.23. We're told this image disguise is used by non-humans, human hybrids, and also humans who are with the non-humans, Genesis 3. We're also told this image disguise is made using microchips, Revelation 13, and it is also made using light, which is electromagnetism. In other words, they are somehow bending the light around a person and able to replace their natural image with a fake image. We're told this fake image is beautiful in Genesis 3. And we're told that it's also sometimes an image of someone who has died in Jude 1. So in this video, we're going to find more biblical confirmation of this image technology within the codes concerning the garments. So again, to lay the foundation for what the garments represent in this prophecy, we recognize that, first of all, the certain men who crept in unawares are dead, Jude 1, 4, and 12. Next, we understand that the seven angels represent Pleiadians, Revelation 1, 20, Amos 5, 8, Job 9, 9, and Job 38, 31. And within this group, the angels of Sardis, we're told, have a name as if they live, but they are really dead, Revelation 3, 1, and most of them wear defiled garments, Revelation 3, 4. Then we read that the specific garments that they defile are flesh, Jude 1, 8, that this garment is not real flesh, but strange flesh, Jude 1, 7, and this strange flesh garment is also spotted by flesh, Jude one twenty three. So it's a garment consisting of strange flesh that also has spots of another kind of flesh. These Pleiadians, we are told, have a marvelous outward appearance, Jude one sixteen, but they do not have a soul, Jude one nineteen. In other words, they're beautiful but they're dead and soulless. In addition to this, there's another clue in the form of a riddle in Haggai 2. In verses 11 through 14, it says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Ask now the priests concerning the law, saying, If one bear holy flesh in the skirt of his garment, and with his skirt do touch bread, pottage, or wine, or oil, or any meat, shall it be holy? And the priests answered and said, No. Then said Haggai, If one that is unclean by a dead body touch any of these, shall it be unclean? And the priest answered and said, It shall be unclean. Then answered Haggai and said, So is this people, and so is this nation before me, saith the Lord, and so is every work of their hands, and that which they offer there is unclean. So, these unclean nations that it refers to are the heathen in verse 22. But notice the word translated as heathen, number 1471, means swarm of locusts. This is extremely important because whenever we see the word heathen in the Bible, it's referring to the locusts, which represent the non-humans. 
So Haggai 2 is saying that the locusts, in other words, the non-humans who are desolating us right now, are unclean. But it goes much deeper than that by its reference to the holy flesh. This word translated as holy, number 6944, means hallowed, dedicated, or consecrated thing. So it's not referring to something that is necessarily consecrated by God, but simply consecrated by someone. It's a thing that someone worships, a hallowed thing. So this flesh is hallowed flesh. And it says if one bears this hallowed flesh in their garment, and this hallowed flesh touches bread, pottage, wine, oil, or meat, then that bread, pottage, wine, oil, or meat will become unclean. So we'll put that here. And we know that wine and oil represent the grapes and the olive tree. These represent people. They're groups of people. So it's saying that these groups, these things, will become unclean if it is touched by the hallowed flesh of the garment. Then next, it says that if one that is unclean by a dead body touches any of these, then they will be unclean also. So this clarifies something very important. It clarifies that the one who is unclean by a dead body is the one who wears the garment with the hallowed flesh. And we know that the ones who are defiled by their flesh garments are the angels of Sardis, a specific group of Pleiadians. And they are defiled by those flesh garments because those flesh garments are of dead people. In other words, the locusts, in other words, the Pleiadians, are unclean because they are wearing the dead. And it also says they are murderers in Jude 1. They went in the way of Cain. So they didn't just touch a dead body. They killed these people and replaced them. That's why they will be killed by God in the end, because the Bible says over and over that they are murderers. Also notice Haggai mentions the seed right after that. In verse 22, it says, is the seed yet in the barn? The Daniel prophecy explains that in the last days, these non-humans will mingle with the seed of humans. That's in Daniel 2.43, which tells us that at the time of the little horn, they will mingle with the seed of men. It doesn't specify who it refers to, but when we connect that timing reference to Daniel 8, 9, and 10, we can see it refers to the army of the stars, the oppressors, which is also called the great dragon in Revelation 12, 9, and also the Nephilim in Genesis 6, 4. All of this, we are told, occurs when Number one, humans begin to multiply on the earth, which happened between 1927 and 1960. Number two, after the war in the sky, which was after World War II, 1945. Number three, after the rise of the Eighth King, the United Nations, which rose up again in 1945. Number four, at the time of the Little Horn, the Nation of Israel, which rose up in 1947. And number five, at the time of the feet and the ten kings, which were identified in the UN report in 2009. So we are right there right now. We are in the time when the dragon is mingling with the seed of humans, when the army of the stars, the oppressors, are on the earth persecuting the multitude. We are right there now. So in Haggai 2.22, it's referencing the end time, our time. It says, is the seed yet in the barn? The seed refers to the seed of humans in Daniel, the seed of humans that is being manipulated right now. The barn represents the place where Jesus will take the wheat when the stars fall. The wheat are the humans who will be safe 
at the asteroid impact. So Haggai is asking if the seed, the humans, are safe yet. And it says, as yet, the vine, the fig tree, and the olive tree have not brought forth. This is important because we know the olive tree represents the two witnesses. That's Revelation 11. And the fig tree represents the nation of Israel, Hosea 9.10. It's saying the two witnesses and the nation of Israel have not brought forth. In other words, they're not in the barn. They have not been saved, which is exactly what the biblical timeline tells us. The two witnesses will be killed at the end of the 1260 years, and the fig tree, the nation of Israel, which is also the little horn, will be going through the final time of trouble. And we know this is about the end time because it says in verse 22 that the kingdom of the locusts will be overthrown on the 24th day of the ninth month, and that is when the fig tree and the olive tree will be blessed. And the locusts, we're told in Revelation 9, come out after the asteroid hits. The locusts are already here, but no one sees them, because right now they look human. But in Lamentations 2, we're told that their beauty will be taken away in the day of the Lord, which is the asteroid impact. In other words, their image technology will no longer be working at that time, and any humans remaining on Earth at that time will be able to see them for what they really are. So the locusts coming out of the smoke in Revelation 9 can represent many things, even drones, but on a deeper level, it represents the visibility of these non-humans. So during the final three and a half years, humans will see the non-humans. They will no longer be disguised. The fig tree and the olive tree right now are too fat and too sweet to be king. Remember, we talked about the sweetness versus the salt last week. The sweetness is the deception. It is the lies. And the salt is the truth. Jesus is the truth, and the salt are Jesus' followers. In Judges 9, 8 through 15, it tells a riddle about the trees. It says, The other trees said to the olive tree, Come thou reign over us. And the olive tree said no, because it didn't want to leave its fatness. And then they asked the fig tree, Come thou reign over us. And the fig tree said no, because it did not want to forsake its sweetness. So the fig tree and the olive tree do not become king. That's important. And the reason is they were too fat and too sweet. That is why Jesus said in Matthew 5 that the blessed are the salt. So in Haggai 2, it's saying that when the blessed go to the barn, the olive tree and the fig tree will be left behind. Then they will either die or go through the final time of trouble and then be blessed on the 24th day of the ninth month. What's ironic about that is that they won't know the days during the final time of trouble because the asteroid will darken the sun, moon, and stars. So they won't be able to calculate the appointed times. They won't know the day or hour. But let's move on because there's more about this garment. In Exodus 28.2, it explains that the hallowed garments are used for glory and beauty. So that, again, is confirmation that these garments refer to the image technology that makes them appear beautiful. Then in Leviticus 19.19, 19, they are commanded to not sow the field with mingled seed. And in addition to that, they're commanded not to wear mingled garments. So it's clear once we understand what the garments are and what the mingled seed refers to, that is saying they are not allowed to wear a garment that is mingled. In other words, 
they are not allowed to wear an image that mixes two species. They can only wear human garments, not humans mixed with other species. In addition to that, it says in Deuteronomy 22.5 that a male cannot wear a female garment. In other words, a male species cannot impersonate a female human. A male Pleiadian cannot impersonate a female human. And they break this law all the time. I, I couldn't figure out what was happening to some of these women that are attacking me. I don't know them. They're strangers. But they act so masculine. It's bizarre. They really act like men. And this explains it right here. They aren't women at all. First of all, they're not human. And second, they are not female. And this is part of what's causing so much confusion with human relationships right now. It's, it's another way that they mingle with the seed. So we already know they're attempting to breed out the humans. Hosea 5, 3 through 7 tells us Israel has begotten strange children. Hosea 7, verses 1, 8, and 9 says strangers have devoured their strength and they don't know it. And Hosea 9.12 says they bring up their children, but there shall not be a human left. This is the breeding program. It's the strangers mingling with the seed. It's the locusts eating up all the green pastures. Okay, so here's the next clue in Job 38.12-15. It says in the King James translation, Hast thou commanded the morning since thy days, and caused the day spring to know his place, that it might take hold of the ends of the earth, that the wicked might be shaken out of it? It is turned as clay to the seal, and they stand as a garment. And from the wicked their light is withholden, and the high arm shall be broken. So it, that doesn't make much sense in that translation. But when we look at the lexicon with just the original words, verse 14 says, overturn clay. So, okay, first of all, we know the clay represents humans. That's in Daniel. So it says, overturn clay, signet ring, set as garment. So we've talked about the signet ring before. The ring seems to have something to do with this image technology. And we've seen that in Hollywood movies and Hollywood videos. They're always showing this ring. What is the ring about? It is about the image technology. Okay, but we're not going to talk about that in this video. We've talked about it in other videos. It's in Isaiah as well. So it says, overturn clay, signet ring set as garment. In other words, they're overturning the humans and the ring is what is creating this garment. They're using a ring to set this garment. But then verse 15 says, Wicked light holds back exalted strength that breaks in pieces. So again, this is referencing the image and the garment. The image that we are told uses light as a deception. In other words, a wicked light. It holds back the exalted strength. So these things are posing as human, but underneath that human image, they are much larger and stronger. Their physique is different. In Job 41, we're given more clues about what they look like under the human disguise. In verse 1, it says, Canst thou draw out Leviathan with a hook? So it's talking about Leviathan here. And they will tell you that Leviathan is a sea monster, but it's much more than that. In Job 41, verses 13 through 17, it says, Who can discover the face of his garment? Or who can come to him with his double bridle? Who can open the doors of his face? His teeth are terrible round about. His scales are his pride, 
shut up together as with a close seal. One is so near to another that no air can come between them. They are joined one to another, they stick together, and they cannot be sundered. So first, who can discover the face of Leviathan's garment? It's talking about the image here. Who can open the doors of his face? So, to discover the face, it says, you would need to know how to open the doors. And remember, we're told in Revelation 13 that the image is made with the mark, and the mark is the microchip. So, this is talking about opening the doors of microtechnology. Who can do that? It's asking. And then it says that Leviathan has terrible teeth. So that's a hint. It's saying when you open the doors of the garment, and specifically the doors of the face, you will see the terrible teeth. And remember it says in Revelation 9 that the locusts have the teeth of lions. And we know the locusts are the heathen, and they are the army from the north. They're also referred to as the dragon. And Revelation 12 tells us to look in the sky to see the dragon. And that's our clue that the Draco constellation, which is in the northern sky, represents the dragon, which is the locusts, which also represents Leviathan and the Satanus. It is the enemy of humanity. Some people call them reptilians for that reason. It even mentions the light in verse 18. Then it says in verse 15, his scales are his pride. And it says these scales are shut up with a close seal. Then down in verse 23, it says these scales are the flakes of Leviathan's flesh. So remember, the strange flesh is spotted. The garment is spotted by the flesh. It is a garment of a human, an image of a human. But that image is spotted by the flesh of Leviathan. It has spots of scales. So, right now, there are people on the internet talking about reptilians and how they are disguised as human, but occasionally will shapeshift into their natural form. And these people will even claim that you can see their scales. But what most people don't realize is that this is all in the Bible. It's all part of this ancient prophecy that is coming true right now. So this ancient prophecy has literally told us that we are dealing with aliens. In Isaiah 61 verse 5, it uses the phrase, sons of the alien. But the original word that means alien, number 5236, is most often translated as stranger or strange. And it's all throughout the Bible. So this prophecy is all about aliens taking over our planet and how it seems they are winning until they die at the asteroid. And they are persecuting the multitude right now. So don't fret if this is happening to you. Know your enemy. Know what they really are. And be glad that they hate you. They are evil. And they hate what is good. So if they hate you, that's a good thing. So that's it for now. I just want you all to know that I am under heavy attack right now. And I don't just mean on the internet. These people are attacking me almost every time I leave the house. And there's no other reason for it except the work that I'm doing right here. I really think it's about this work that I'm doing. So if you feel like you want to support this, it is greatly appreciated. And thank you so much to those who do support this. Please forgive me if there's a week here and there that's missed. I usually post these every week, but this is more in-depth than what you would hear at your weekly church sermon. So there are times when these videos will take more than a week to finish. So 
I hope you're doing okay. I hope you're doing well. And I will talk to you next time.